It can be really hard to find the perfect template or make a template from scratch when you're designing and building your own skateboard. So in this video, I am going to show you how to make your own template using Autodesk Fusion 360, which is a 3D modeling software. And even though it's 3D, we're going to use the 2D sketching aspect of it to create our template. Once you have Fusion 360 open, we are going to create a new sketch on the top plane. Next, I'm going to make a rectangle that is the length and width of the skateboard I am designing. Once I have the rectangle, I'm going to make two center lines, both a horizontal and vertical center line. And the skateboard I'm going to be making is fully symmetrical or symmetrical about both the horizontal center line and the vertical center line. So I'm going to be using the mirror functionality to generate a lot of the curves. If your board is asymmetrical, you simply will just create the other half of your design and not mirror it. Before I, like, before I start to make the curves, I like to position my wheelbase and where that is going to be. And once I have the wheelbase, or at least half of the wheelbase drawn, as I've shown here, I'm going to create a spline to make the end profile of the skateboard. The spline option that shows up in the toolbar right now on this version of Fusion 360 is a fit point spline, but I actually prefer to make a different type of spline. So if I click on Create, and spline, I am going to make a control point spline. I'm going to start at the center of the end of the skateboard and I'm going to go up to a random point along the top edge here. And I'm just going to place two points before placing my final point. So I've clicked four times so I have an end point, two control points, and then another end point. Looks like I clicked too many times, so I'm going to redraw that. All right. And then I like to put the control points along the vertical edge and horizontal edge as shown here. And I'm just going to be adjusting their, their length and height. And I'm also going to adjust this point. So this point I found I like it best in between, somewhere between the outermost bolt hole and the innermost. Usually I line it up with the outermost hole. And since I can't dimension that as zero, I'm going to create another line here, change it to a construction line. And make them coincident.
Now I think if I mirror this, I can still adjust this and it'll adjust the mirrored spline. So I'm going to give that a shot. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. So you can see as I adjust this now, it is also going to adjust the other part of it. So I just adjust it to where I think it looks good based on what I like in a shape of a board or what will be most helpful for the skater this board is going to be for. And then I can just mirror these two splines over this line to get the exact same thing on the opposite side. Or if I want it to be slightly different, I would just repeat this whole process on the right side. So now we have the rough shape of a board. And if you want to put circles at these points, you can for your truck holes. I'm just going to leave it like this for right now. And I can get rid of this rectangle though and replace it with just straight lines between the two splines. So let me delete these. And just note that once you delete these, you will be losing the constraints that were on these points here. Unless, yeah, so you can see that these are no longer constrained. So just don't adjust those. Or what we can do, I'm going to undo this, actually, because this might be better, I just thought of it right now, is just change the, this outer rectangle to construction lines. So you can leave them in and not get them confused with your regular lines. And I'm just going to now draw a line between these points. Perfect. I'm going to finish this sketch, and now I've got my template. Once I have this, if you are using like a laser cutter to make this template, you can basically stop here and click on the sketches down here, the sketches, uh, I'm not sure what to call this, the sketches bar, and then on your sketch you just created, you can right click and save as DXF and that will allow you to export a DXF file. You may have issues with the DXF generating pop properly if you used a fit point spline. If that's the case, there's a free app for Fusion 360 for making converting splines to polylines. Do a Google search for that and you'll be able to find it. That should help with any issues you have with DXF exports. If you don't have a laser cutter and you're going to be printing this on a regular printer, you can create a drawing from this design. One last thing I need to do before I save this for printing is I want to add some rectangles that are a little bit smaller than a sheet of paper on here. So I'm going to reopen this sketch and I'm going to make some rectangles that are seven and a half by 10 inches. So an inch shorter than a regular size piece of paper. And 
I want to just put some points at the midpoints of some of these edges so that I can then snap like that. And then I'm going to do this again a couple times. And now we're ready for the next step. Now that we have this sketch, I'm going to create a drawing from it. And I'm going to change the sheet size to size A, which is just standard, like a standard sheet of paper. Click OK. If you have a big printer, like a plotter that can print this out full scale on a big sheet of paper, then you don't need to do that. And you can, this, this next step would be a lot, a lot easier for you. But I'm just gonna assume that you are using just a standard printer. And right here, we're gonna change the orientation to top. And leave the scale one to one. And then we just have to click somewhere on this sheet to place the view. And then just hit OK. So here's our board. You can see it does not fit on the sheet of paper, which is totally fine. I'm going to delete this template that was on this sheet, or the title block. And I'm going to drag this view like this so that one of those boxes I drew is roughly centered inside the sheet of paper. Just make sure the entire box is inside the sheet. I want to then use this output button and output a PDF. So I'm going to output all sheets. I'm going to open the PDF. Once you've output this one square, you're going to take that drawing and then shift it over so that the next rectangle is inside the sheet. And you're going to do the same thing, output PDF, all sheets, OK, or this should actually be indexed so that you don't you don't want to overwrite what you just created and now I'm going to change my view here so that you can see what is being output so here is the PDF here is the first PDF I output here is the second one I output and you're going to do this for all of those rectangular segments you've created. And when you print this out, you're going to line up the sheets with the lines that you've created here. So these rectangles, if you know, you know that this line showing up right here is equivalent to this line right here. And I didn't do it in Fusion 360, but 
it probably would be a good idea to get rid of this outside border too, just to eliminate any additional confusion. And I think you can do that. If I click on this. Yeah, so I would do that next time as well. And make sure that when you print this out, you print at full scale and measure your board when you print it out. Measure the template when you print it out just to make sure the scaling is all correct. You can do this with long boards too. Your splines might just be a little bit different. And you can do this for any size board. You just have to reposition the template on the sheet in Fusion 360 differently for however big it is. Once you've got it printed out, you can tape it all together, cut it with some scissors, and then lay it over your board. So that's all there is to it. And if you have any questions, you can post those to the forums at opensourceboards.com. Also, just keep in mind that if you are making a paper template, um, not using a laser cutter, when you lay the paper template over a curved board, that will change the profile slightly. It's, it's not the same as simply projecting that top view onto a board. When you lay it on, the board will get a little bit shorter, and depending on how much concave you have, it might get a little bit narrower at the concave. So you may need to make some compensation in the design when you are creating the template. I hope this all helped, and have fun making boards.